Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today, I'm answering the question, can a depressed person have a good day? In other words, are you really depressed if you can feel good for part of the day? Usually, we think of someone who is moderately to severely depressed as being very sad and unresponsive to things, maybe even zombie-like. But that isn't always how it looks. But when it does look like this, we call it having melancholic features or a melancholic depression. When someone is able to have a good day or enjoy some things, we call it having atypical features or an atypical depression. A typical depression is actually the most common way depression looks. It's kind of an unfortunate name because it sounds as though atypical means it's rare or unusual, but it's actually the more common presentation. Let's take a look at the two types of depression and compare them. First, there's mood reactivity, how easily you're able to express your emotions. With a typical depression, you can brighten up when something good happens. It is a momentary brightening though, and it's not something that you feel for weeks, but you can feel like your mood has lifted, usually in response to a positive event, like a party or watching a good movie. With melancholic depression, you don't have much positive response when good things happen. You just feel really low, and it just seems like nothing can lift you up. With atypical depression, you have an increase in appetite and usually weight gain. And with melancholic depression, you lose your appetite and you may lose weight. With atypical depression, you oversleep, usually 10 hours or more. It's like you can't get enough sleep. You're always tired and it's easy for you to fall back asleep if you're left alone. And this sleep may be continuous starting in the evening or it could be um, a long overnight sleep with some naps during the day. With melancholic depression, you tend to sleep less than your usual and wake up early in the morning. So for example, if you usually sleep from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., when you get depressed, you may start having broken sleep throughout the night or you may start waking up at 4 a.m. and be unable to fall back asleep. With a typical depression, you can experience leaden paralysis where you feel weighted down in your arms and your legs. Some people can feel this way most of the day, but some people can feel it for only a certain part of the day, like in the morning, making it really hard for you to get out of bed. With melancholic depression, you can be very slowed down where you move about slowly, but it's not because your limbs feel heavy, but internally you feel like you're slowed in all of your responses. You can also have agitation where you move faster, like pacing or shaking your legs when you sit. For atypical depression, it affects your thinking differently. You tend to be more sensitive to rejection, and this may be part of your personality to read more into someone's comments or actions, but when you get depressed, it's even worse and may cause problems for you in your relationships. With melancholic depression, you become very guilt-ridden. You, you may bring up stuff from way back that you feel bad about and wish you had done things differently. We call it ruminating when you run things over and over in your mind. And lastly, sometimes with depression, how you feel can vary during the day. With a typical depression, there's more of a trend to feel worse in the evenings. And with melancholic depression, you feel worse first thing in the mornings, and you can feel a little bit better as the day wears on. Some people will refer to atypical or melancholic features as subtypes of depression, but they're really called course specifiers. Since, so the terminology would be major depression with atypical features. You can have these atypical features with depression that comes with bipolar disorder and the chronic depression that we used to call dysthymic disorder, but we now call it persistent depressive disorder. Are there certain kinds of people? who tend to have more atypical depression features. Some literature suggests that atypical depression may be more prevalent in people with histrionic, borderline, and avoidant personalities. I talk about each of these personalities in separate videos that you can watch in my personality disorder playlist. Another pattern we see with atypical depression is that the course tends to be more chronic, meaning people stay depressed longer. And because of the increased appetite and sleep, people can gain a lot of weight. Also, 
the leaden paralysis can make you feel very fatigued. And some people can even be misdiagnosed as having chronic fatigue syndrome. Or you could really have a chronic fatigue, but the depression gets missed because it looks so similar. A typical depression has been shown to respond better to a different kind of antidepressant called a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, or MAOIs. These drugs aren't used as much as they once were 20 to 30 years ago before the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, came out. Those would be medications like Prozac, Zoloft, and Lexapro. These medications have less side effects overall, so they're better tolerated. But they're not as good for atypical depression. The MAOIs fell out of favor because they have a lot of drug interactions and they have a serious interaction with foods high in tyramine. If you consume those foods while taking one of these drugs, you could have a hypertensive crisis where your blood pressure shoots up very high, and this could be fatal. So people taking the medication were given a list of foods that you couldn't eat while you were on the medication. Some of these foods were aged cheeses and wine. Also, you have to be careful taking certain prescription and non-prescription medications, including allergy medications. Those interactions could cause serotonin syndrome, which could also make you very sick where you need to go to the hospital. There's a newer version of the MAOIs called reversible MAOIs that don't require the dietary restrictions, but you still have to be careful about other medications that you take. One of these medications is called selegiline, and there's a patch version of it called MSAM. The MAOIs have also been shown to do a better job with treatment-resistant depression, but it still wouldn't be a good choice for you if you take a lot of other medications or don't think that you could be vigilant about checking all of the pills that you take in the future. So the MAOIs are good drugs. Back in the day when I used them 20 years ago, they did work better. However, better was relative because we didn't have all of the medications that we have now. But even so, fast forwarding 20 years, uh, we've used the other medications more because there's less side effects, but there's still these issues and these conditions where they, the MAOIs still seem to be superior. So I'm bringing this up so that if you do feel like you fit a profile of having atypical features with your depression, this may be something you wanna talk with your doctor about. A lot of people aren't using them very much um, these days. I don't use them very much these days because it, it takes work. You really have to be on top of things to make sure that you don't have the drug-drug interactions, even if you are using one of the newer ones. So just something to think about. Check out my other videos on depression, like this one on psychotic depression, or my personality disorder video playlist. See you next time.